All right, <clears throat> what is up guys? VV back here with another review video or reveal type video. This time we're going over the OP04 leaders. We got six cards up, so uh, let's get straight into it. Some really cool stuff here. I cannot wait for OP04 stuff, guys, even though, like I said in many other videos, they already have that in, in uh, Japan ahead of us. They're ahead of us uh, in the releases. But we do get to see the cool stuff really early so we can brainstorm and think about it. See what they do for the meta so we can try to counter it. So, you know, there's uh, there's pros and cons, but... Alright, let's get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so first up, we got Crocodile. This is a purple-yellow leader. And as is the case, typically speaking, with the dual-colored leaders, they have 5,000 power and 4 life as opposed to 5 life. Now we're going to see some exceptions to that later in, in the in the video. All right, so so keep that in mind. All right, so here we go. He's a seven warlords of the sea baroque works uh, type, which is cool. And then we have effect opponent's turn once per turn. Excuse me. When a dawn card on your field is returned to your dawn deck by your effect, add up to one dawn card from your dawn deck and set it as active. Okay, um, I'm not. I don't run a lot of purple uh, when I'm playtesting or when I'm. You know, eventually, I do want to put some videos up of me playing, um, and I don't run much purple. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the only purple that I get, and same same with most of the colors, I will say, but I, I keep a closer eye on red. Uh, the red cards, you know, black cards is obviously my favorite. Yellow cards are interesting to me. Green and blue, I'm a little hazy on some of them, but purple cards, uh, I don't really know. Um, I'm not good with their interactions yet. So when it says opponent's turn once per turn, when a dawn card on your field is returned to your dawn deck by your effect, add up to one dawn card from your dawn deck instead of as active. So I guess this is for some defensive type of actions, correct? And I think there's an Ulta blocker card who minus one's on her effect, and this just makes it free. So in that regard, it's really cool. Uh, I don't know if their types add uh, line up. I, I don't like I said. I'm not sure, uh, but just looking at the ability and just trying to judge it in a vacuum, how how useful is this? Um, well, you can't use that all on your turn, right? It's only on the opponent's turn. You can only do it once. That you know, using using an ability once is fine. That's expected, but some can you know some can kind of pop off, right? But in this case, uh, okay. I, I see this as being a little bit of around average. The, I think the color combos will be really nice. Like I think purple and yellow combo together could be really interesting because you have some pretty big hitters in purple. Well, actually, see, I don't know if you can access them with Seven Warlords of Sea and Baroque Works because I'm thinking Kaido, and I think I think that's um, Animal Kingdoms or whatever that is. I think I don't think that's Warlords of the Sea. Ah. See, so I'm going to give this card just a 5 out of 10. I don't think it's insane. I think the best part about it is literally the fact that you can combine yellow and purple stuff. So life manipulation with cards like uh, Judgment of Hell. Uh, that's that's about the best I can get, gather from it. And the the ability, if you if you build very defensive heavy, this ability could be really strong. But see, here, so here's my biggest problem with it. Why do I need Dawn Open on my opponent's turn because remember this isn't ramping you dawn it says when a dawn card on your field is returned right so you're losing a dawn card and this is letting you get one back so you're not really ramping forwards even, even though i understand it's just keeping you in line with the flow of the game with the progression into, into late game i get that and that's nothing to overlook but but it's not how do i say this it's not um giving you a strict advantage it's expecting it's waiting for you to cause yourself a disadvantage <laughs> to play a card from from uh, you know purple that returns a dawn deck to bring it back so and, and I've seen a lot of decks that don't really run much minus stuff and hey that's because it's so devastating to your board state right to your progression um, so who knows maybe this card will turn it on I'm gonna give it a five I'm gonna give it just an average sorry guys I know there's probably some purple players out there who are like you have no idea what you're talking about and hey that's fair <clears throat> Y'all leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what you think about it. Okay, another purple card. Great. Uh, this is purple green though. Uh, this is uh, Don Quixote do Flamingo. 
four life, 5,000 power, green, purple. Okay, all that's, you know, dual color, 5K, four life. Yep, that's a standard leader. Uh, type, seven warlords of the sea, Don Quixote pirates. Okay, another seven warlords of the sea guy. End of your turn. Set up to two of your dawn cards as active. Wow, right? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, see now that's very good in my opinion because the, um, as, as everyone here knows what are the, every single color every single color arc has a has a, uh, a specific event that costs two dawn that will give you plus four thousand right like impact wave or shock wave whatever it's called um, uh, oh gosh red hawk from uh, red Punk Gibson from green, Thunder Bogger from purple and yellow. Um, which one did I miss? Blue. They have the Love 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 Melody or whatever it is. You know, and, and I think there some some colors even ha have multiples. And worst case scenario, there are the one cost ones. Things like Radical Beam, right? Guard Point, um, cards like that. Okay. This is solid. This allows you to go all out on offense, and you know. You all you know for a fact you will always have up your uh, two dawn for a defensive action. Um, I think I think this is really good. I, I'm, I don't think this is broken or anything like that, but I think this is extremely solid. And and you know with these dual color uh, leaders, we should talk about the color uh, the colors being combined together, what they're going to have access to. And you know anything with green is going to have uh, any kind of on play effects from purple. Are multiplied in, in the sense of just using Trafalgar Law, right? Because because for those who don't know, Trafalgar Law can return any of your cards to your hand. It doesn't check for a um, a cost when you're returning the card to your hand, but you can only play a card that is three or less. Um, so I, I do think this is going to be really really solid, really solid. Um, and one more thing I do want to say is. There's a lot of good defenders going around in green and purple, right? I think only green and black has better defender options. You know, you could argue for red too, but purple has queen, and, and purple does have the the uh, the Uta. Uh, and and uh, do they have any others? They do have the little four cost beast that that gets cheated out. The one of the jailer beasts, I can't remember Min Minoquala, I think it is. You know, just it, it just has really solid stuff in that regard. So. You know, this could be a pretty pretty strong rock deck. And, and when I say rock, for those who don't know, that's kind of an old expression, like an old Magic the Gathering expression. You know, you have like your aggro decks, you know, blitz, in other words. Then you have your mid-range rock decks, which is like de decks that are very strong in the middle of the game. Uh, they kind of peak out their power in the middle of the game. And then you have your um, control decks. And, and I might do a whole video talking about the, the different, you know, style decks later uh, in, in, a, in another video. But okay, overall this card, I'm going to give it a 7.5 because it combines two very strong colors um, and it has an effect that is just always relevant. See, now where this effect happens at the end of your turn, so it's basically for your opponent's turn, this is still fine for me. Like, I, I don't have an issue with this effect because now it, it's preparing more, uh, me for next turn. So this card, I'm going to give a 7, uh, 7.5, maybe it should have been a 7, but it, I think it's a very solid card. Okay, Isho. Very excited about this leader, guys. I have read this card. Very excited about this leader. This is a 4 life, 5,000 cost. Or 5,000 power. Excuse me. 4 life, 5,000 power. Green, black color. So your very standard uh, stats there for a dual color um, leader. Navy type. He has two abilities. The first one is Dawn times one. Your turn. Give all of your opponent's characters minus one cost. So this is... Basically, you know, think of Smoker's ability, but to everyone, right? Or imagine a single activation of Garp, but to everyone, even characters above seven cost. Um, and then he also has, end of your turn, pay one, set up to one of your characters with a cost of five or less as active. Also, this does combine green and black cards. So... So th th this is very, very strong uh, combinations here. Um, I think it will take a while to figure out what works best because there's going to be so many options between the two. Like, for example, 
do you make this deck more green heavy or do you make it more black heavy? Do you make it more five cost heavy? Because that effect, uh, five cost and lower obviously, you know, that effect is very strong. So black is my color. So let me just list you like three or four cards real quick, maybe more that are four or five cost that are extremely powerful. You know, I don't know, maybe like um, Smoker. We're going to talk about five cost Smoker, obviously. What about um, Borsalino? Four cost Kuzan. Um, who knows? Maybe this will actually bring in uh, the promo Sengoku, the five cost Sengoku that has attached one Dawn to him. And he is, he gives everyone minus two to their cost. And maybe, maybe that will be a big combo. And, uh, and as we know from OP03, there's an eight cost Isho character, like Isho, this leader, who, if you attach it on him, minus three to all the characters, right? So, you know, there, there's a, there's, there's a argument there. But then you have your Trafalgar Law. You have, um, just a lot of options, a lot of options to raise back up with this ability. And speaking of Trafalgar Law, this guy combines green and black, right? Well, what are some really good green, or excuse me, some really good three cost cards that could go with Trafalgar Law? I don't know, maybe a uh, Kobe? Like, see, that, that's the thing. Trafalgar Law, five cost, six gay, bounce one of your dudes, right? So maybe if there's a searcher in the deck we want to run, easy bounce target, right? And then play a three cost or less. Okay, well, I'll just play Kobe. And now that will, you know, well, it depends. If this guy's ability is active, he'll hit anyone that's a four or less. So, I, I don't know what else to say other than this card is just very soft. Even just play, uh, returning Kobe to play Kobe, right? I mean, that's that's another option. Um, yeah, I, I think I think this color combination, I think these abilities are incredibly strong. And I personally think it's going to be more of a black-leaning deck. Uh, but maybe, again, that, maybe that's personal bias from me. Like I told you, I'm very big into the, uh, the black... Uh, the black color in this game. I like the admirals. I like the navy feel. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. I think for what a leader ability should be, standing up a guy in your turn, like that's going to allow you to save so many characters, not just blockers. I think a lot of people are thinking of like, oh, my blockers, I can actually swing and then, uh, you know, and then stand them up. Yeah, that is true. But you can also just smash him with one of your characters. That's a five cost or less. And then stand on the end of the turn that you don't want to lose. Maybe like your Kuzan, right? How's about Garp? How's about your five cost Garp that says, okay, you know, tap him down or excuse me, rest him to KO a four or less or five or less if you have his ability on. And then in a turn, I'm going to stand him up. You're not getting a free swing at him. You know, they, they, might, be able to, they might be able to get rid of him with a, uh, you know, like a jet pistol or something after that, but it doesn't matter. You, you made them invest an, an additional card. They couldn't just take it out by swinging at it. So I, I think this card is a 9 out of 10. Like for what a leader should be. Now, like I said, I don't know. You know, red is still very strong in the format from what I understand and probably always will be. Um, but I don't know how this leader will do. But I think he has all of the potential to be something great. So I'm giving this guy a 9 out of 10. Really, really solid leader. Okay, moving on to queen. We got a yellow, blue, 4 life, 5,000 power. Um, blue, yellow, Animal Kingdom Pirates leader. Interesting. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting stuck on the Animal Kingdom Pirates because Queen, you know, is Animal Kingdom Pirates. But I'm thinking of purple. Ugh, okay, a lot of crazy stuff going here. Yeah, you know, going on here in my in my mind. Um, so the effect is Dawn times one when attacking. So only one Dawn investment. Okay, I I already like that. Uh, same thing with the last one, right? Like, I really like that. That's a big deal, and I should have I should have actually spent more time talking about that. Single Dawn investments are what you want from your leader. That's what you want for your leader to do, right? Is to put one Dawn into it and then get its effect. So this one has, if you have a total of four or less cards in your life area and hand. Well, the life area is going to be easy, right? Even though it's yellow, you can do some manipulation there. You should easily have four or less life cards at all time with a... With a you know, with this effect in mind. Um, draw one card. Okay, so if you have a total of four or less cards in your life area and hand, draw one card. So, you will have to burn some cards early if you want to start getting your, your, your draw effects from this. 
because that'll make it swing for six and this effect. So you definitely want that. You know, you definitely you definitely do want to turn that on as soon as possible. Um, then if you have, if if you have a character with a cost of eight or more, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards instead of drawing the card instead of drawing one card. Okay, so this is everything I'd expect a yellow blue card to be. It's it's like basically draw a card or oh I'm in I'm in trouble with my life like I have uh, an eight or you know, maybe if you're not in trouble with your life maybe you do want to ramp somewhat right if you have an eight eight cost or more well now you just put it on top of your deck but you, or on top of your life cards but you do have to be careful right because this is at four or less cards in your life are in hand to, to activate this ability <clears throat> excuse me um, I personally think that this card is solid. Um, you know, with how do I say this? Th this card allows for a lot, and it has a lot of utility built into it. You can draw a card, or if you have this situation, you know, where you have an eight or more on the board, you can also put a card as life. How how easy will it be to stick, you know, eight costs or higher? I don't know. They're they're typically pretty easy to stick, right? But we have seen cards from blue, you know. Or blue and black, really, who can kind of... And, and red. Yeah, shoot, probably all the colors. Who can deal with the higher cost guys. But, generally speaking, I think this ability is very strong. Um, and I think this... I think this character's ability is more geared towards, like, turn three or four. Because if you wanted to activate this on turn two, right? Because you can't swing on turn one. So if you want to swing on turn two with this ability... How, how could you go about doing that? You'd have to you'd have to play a card on turn one to get you to four life, uh, excuse me, to four cards in your hand, and then you have to do again on turn two some very low cost of just to do it. So realistically, you'd want to use this effect on turn three, right? Turn three is probably when you're going to see this come into play, um, which is not uncommon. You know, that's I think that's pretty common amongst all uh, leaders. But yeah, I, I think this ability is very solid. And once you get it around turn three, turn four, where you start netting cards, you know, and you're, you're going to use counters early, right? So that you can actually start getting the draw card effect and, and all that. I, I think um, if I were to judge this card right here, if I were to rank it, I think I would give it like a seven out of ten. I don't think it's insane. I'm not going to lie. Because in order to get the life effect, you know, think of it this way. If you're in trouble where, like, uh, I need I need to start gaining life, <laughs> well... That whole turn, if you want to gain the life, is you're going to have to play an 8 cost in the blue and yellow colors. You're going to have to play an 8 cost and have a Dawn open to attach and attack. Um, and now if you're doing that, you know, you'll have to sit back on a 1 cost uh, counter. You know, like a 1 cost event counter maybe or something like that. I'm not saying it's not good. I'll give it a 7.5 because I think this is pretty well above like an average leader effect and, and you know with the color combinations blue and blue and yellow you, I think you're gonna have some pretty decent options uh, like Yamato nine cost Yamato will be very solid in a deck like this obviously um, or is she does does Yamato have any keyword obligations she has to stick to I, I can't remember off the top of my head I apologize um, I, I don't think she does but if she does someone correct me in the comments below uh, I think there's a lot of good options here. I do think there's a lot of good, a lot of really strong options, and this will be a really fun deck to play. Blue and yellow will probably be one of the funner decks to play. All right, so 7.5, moving on. Okay, <clears throat> this is probably the character I'm, mo or, excuse me, leader, that I'm most excited to talk about. Rebecca, five life, 5,000 power, blue-black color, dress rosa type. This leader cannot attack. Okay. Right, did you get that? 5,000 5, power, 5 life, but it's a dual blue-black uh, color leader. Well, wait a minute, shouldn't he have only, or she have only 4 life? Well, no, because there is an additional clause here. It says this leader cannot attack. That justifies her having the extra life. So you know right away. You know right away. If you're a magic player, you know by the colors alone. But if you know right away, reading that, this leader cannot attack, this is going to be a control deck. You, you know right away. So now let's read let's read the um, the activate. Activate main once per turn, pay one. Okay, one dawn investment. I'm always happy about that. That that is very relevant. 
If you have six or less cards in your hand, look at two cards from the top of your deck, reveal it to one Dressrosa type card and add it to your hand, then trash the rest. Very, very, very strong effect. That is an always relevant effect because six or less cards in your hand, you can activate this on turn one even if you're on the draw. If you're on the play, you obviously can, but even on the draw, you can activate this because you'll draw to six, so you have six or less cards in your hand. So look at look at two cards from the top of your deck, reveal to one dress rose of type. Yeah, this this has like all of the makings that you want to build your control deck around. You have a draw card effect baked into the leader. She can't attack anyway. Right? So I, I'm sure they're going to use that in the future, right? They're probably going to use that with other cards that interact with the fact that she cannot attack, right? So maybe there'll be cards that, that uh, tap your leader down, right? That, that rest your leader. I, I think this card's amazing. Uh, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Um, I, I'm tempted to go 10 out of 10, but I can't... Can you even make a leader 10 out of 10 if they're not some type of <laughs> some type of red interaction? <laughs> I, I'm kidding, of course, but I think everyone here knows what I mean. Uh, red is just so strong. Uh, but blue and black, so you're getting... I'm sure it's going to be hard to balance this deck, but maybe not, actually. I say it's probably going to be hard to balance the deck, but unlike the... Um, i got to go back real quick. With the purple-yellow, you see how there's no stipulation on what kind of cards need to be in the deck? Like, it just says, once per turn, do this. Same thing with purple and green. Once you know, end of your turn, do this. Green, green and black, same thing. Just you can put anything you want here and just do this effect. That's a five cost or less, right? Blue and yellow, same thing. There is no, there is no stipulation on what kind of cards you can play. Well, in the blue black deck, they are strictly dress rosa. Um, now, now that doesn't mean you can you can't put other cards in there. Of course you can, but if you want the, the, her uh, her uh, effect to go off, it has to be a dress rosa type card. Now, the, the, the ability is still not dead because you're putting cards into your trash. That will come out later in the OP04, um, you know, in the fulls, your OP04 uh, black card review. But there is a card there that, that uh, <laughs> trust me, you want cards in your in your trash. This this effect is not dead ever. Even if you whiff on it, that's unfortunate to draw the card. But you are at least fueling cards into your, into your uh, trash so that you can use them later in the game or start, um, you know, triggering things later in the game. So, oh, man, this card has got to be a 9.5 out of 10 for what a leader is and what you want it to be. Blue and black comboing together is going to be awesome because, you know, how do I say this? From what I've seen, Dressrosa is almost strictly black cards at the moment, but who knows, in the future we might get some, some good blue cards as well. But yeah, th this leader just reeks of control. Like, oh yeah, that is a control deck leader, and I love to see it. But will it be good or not? I don't know. I think it has all the tools it needs. Like, blue has tons of utility and draw card effects, and blue has something that black doesn't have in in the in well a lot of things they don't have, but in the sense of bouncing cards. So, for example, in a in a black mirror match like Smoker versus Smoker in OP02, one of the biggest problems you know, was you can't deal with their Smoker or Borsalino. There is no card that says destroy. You have to hit them in, in combat or wait for them to tap out or, 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 or well, or, or you tap out and hit you in combat and then you're playing the counter game, right? Well, with blue involved, you can just bounce stuff, right? So, I mean, it doesn't KO them. Like Borsalino, like that's the best example I gave in Smoker. Like, oh, okay, I'll just bounce them out of, out of the way, right? I'm not KOing them, so I can do that. So anyway, I think this card's awesome. 9 out of 10. Awesome. Cannot wait to play a Rebecca deck. Cannot wait to play Rebe Rebecca. Okay, last leader. All right, so we got Nefeltari VV. I've had to say this before. Uh, I did not get my name VV from this. My name comes from Wolfric and turning the V, or excuse me, turning the W into two Vs. <clears throat> so I just have to get that out of the way. <laughs> Every time I see that card, I'll probably have to say it. Okay. 5,000 power, 5 life. Again, we got a 5-5 five, five leader, right? Red and blue this time. Alabasta type. And this leader cannot attack. So we should expect that, right? 5,000 power, 5 life, dual color leader. Well, then they can't attack. And this has blue in it again. And I'm just saying, the first thing I think of is control right away. But let's see what the activate is. It might be the total opposite. Activate main once per turn, pay two, draw one card and add up to one of your character, uh, wait, draw one card. So, okay, that alone is good. 
Once per turn, pay two, draw one card. And up to one of your characters gains rush during this turn. This card can attack on the turn in which it's played. Yeah, so so that uh that's awesome. That is a really strong effect. So people might hate me, but that second part there is it seems almost <laughs> it seems kind of dumb to me. Gains rush. Well, yeah, all the best red cards pretty much have rush. And if you wanted to do Newgate, if you wanted to do like Whitebeard, the nine cost Whitebeard, well, you can't even activate this ability anyway. Um, that's interesting. Or, or like a Mihawk, right? If you go like a nine cost Mihawk that can bounce stuff and then play this, you can't even give that rush. So the cards you'd want to give rush to, it would probably make a broken. But the cards you'd want to give rush to, you can't, you can't really hit. Um, the pay two drawn card alone is worth it. I'm going to say that right now, right up front. I think Nepletar VV has... As much, if not more, potential than Rebecca. Uh, I'm going to say as much because they both have the blue. They both have the draw card effect. Now, while Rebecca's is one cost less, you could whiff on hers, theoretically. Speaking of that, I should have said, you're probably going to want a deck that has like 30 plus dress rosa cards in it so that you don't whiff very often, if at all. You know, or a very low chance to whiff. Because uh, over half your deck is, then one out of two cards should be dress rosa. Uh, but anyway, going back to Nepletar, VV, this just draws a card, period. And then it has the added effect of um, uh, and up to your, up to one of your characters gains rush during this turn. If I were to make a deck running Nepletar, VV, um, I would be making it built around the idea that I have pay to draw a card every single turn. That's, that's the idea that I'm building around. Um, and it's just a flat-out card draw mechanism to to explain this in terms of cards this is more like what queen does right where in, now i understand queen is purple and i understand queen is a five cost um character that minuses a dawn but she draws two cards and trashes one right where like you still gained a card even though you trashed one i, I know that was probably a clumsy example but bear with me what i'm trying to say is you're not expending a card to do this you're not like like Kuzan would probably be a better example from Black. The four cost black uh, black Kuzan. He's a four cost five K on play draw card. It's it's like it's even better than that because you don't need any effect in hand. You have it on your leader's um, template, right? He, this leader just says pay two and draw a card. That that is better than most people understand. I think. Um, will it see red and blue is a weird color combo? I'm not gonna lie. Um, not because of the contrast or anything. I'm, I'm saying, like, just generally speaking, red and blue... Uh, let me see. Let me try to word this. Let me see if I can word this correctly or properly. Red features a lot of aggro stuff. We've seen Zoro decks. We've seen... Like, even the, the Whitebeard decks are kind of becoming aggro-y. You know, like, in the sense of... Well, they were especially back when um, when Moby Dick, the, the card was still... The stage was still a card. It wasn't banned. Um... You know, it's these very, very aggressive decks, in my personal opinion, because because that was a six cost leader too, right? Um, I think the fact that, this lead, that the fact that this leader cannot attack is kind of strange to me. I understand what they're going for, but I don't know. I might have to do a video later talking about it. I don't really see why uh, dual land, dual color leaders should have the restriction of only four life. Right, and then like, oh well, if we're gonna give her five, if we're gonna give them five life, we have to give them some type of effect that that negates or like uh, pushes them back. Because I'm gonna be honest, most of the times the single color decks are just better, not because they have, I mean, they have less cards to pull from, right? They're not dual color decks. It doesn't matter though, because they have five life, so they get that one extra turn to pull something off, right? And the same idea with the with the red blue or with the, with the multicolored ones. I, I wonder why they have to be at four life and still be able to attack. That doesn't make sense to me personally, because at the end of the day, you can only have fifty cards in your deck. And the way that they balance these cards, I do have a video coming out on that, um, talking about how. Well, actually, no, I, I already I already put it out. I would say I had I had I was making one around the same time I was making this video. I put out a um, a. Um, a video talking about how they balance the game. So, 
I don't know why there would be a a punishment for going a multicolored leader if that's what you're trying to go. Anyway, that's a rant for another time. Um, as far as this card goes, I think this is just like Rebecca. I, I put this at an... I'm going to put this one at a 9 out of 10 because blue and red still have a lot of good options to choose from. You're paying two to just always draw a card. You just always have that effect. And then you also, later in the game, will probably have the ability to, to make a huge 8 cost or a 7 cost character swing. Right? That's, that's just awesome. So I give this card a 9 out of 10. I can't wait to see what kind of decks come out for it. Well, right, guys, it's been like a 30-minute video, so I appreciate y'all sticking around this long if you did. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if, if, if you enjoyed what you saw, and um, I'll see you guys next video. Hope y'all enjoyed. All right, peace.